So I'm going to continue uh, making these point-based curtain panels the way I did in the uh, previous tutorial. Uh, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to get all of my points. And I'm going to just get the points. And I'm going to turn on all of the reference planes, not just the normal planes. I show them always. Then I've got my planes. I'm going to pick each plane and put a reference point on it. And I'm going to ignore those warnings. And I'm just going to keep walking this around, putting points on the point normals. So they're all sort of in the same spot. But luckily, they're the first thing in the tab order, so I can walk right around and pick all these guys. And then I can parameterize all of them at once. Just call it uh, height. Give it a dimension. And give it a value. Oh, why can't I give it a value? What's up with that? In any event, there they are. So I've got my point based points, and I'm going to walk around and make myself a second frame, just like I did in the previous tutorial. Now, before, I just took that frame and I went, uh, I went Shazam. I've got a nice little cube. Now this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mullion. There's a couple ways to do this. I'm just going to show this one today where I'm going to get one of those faces. I'm going to create a form. I'm going to choose the plane option, not one of those goofy cylinders. And I'm going to do the same over here. I'm going to create a form. I'm just going to keep doing that with all of these guys until I've got a little box like so. Now that isn't really a mullion, but what is a mullion is if I tab into each one of these and just select the surface, it's important to just select the surface, and then what happens is I have a really bad video card on this, by the way, so that's why it's flashing all over the place. So I'm making all these slabs. These are locked forms, which basically means that um, they all are going to stick with the planes that extruded them. And they all are going to have a positive and a negative offset. I'm going to go in and I'm going to make it just a negative offset. Let's call it a foot. Um, actually, let's call it something parameterized. Call it mullion. Make it a dimension. And suddenly I've got a nice little box. It's just a little easier to see if I do in a shaded view. The problem is, is that we can't actually join up the corners, so it's a little dirty. I'm going to load this into the project so you can see how this behaves once I get it into the surface. So this is just a little curved surface that if I had just done a regular extrusion it would make something all faceted and a little bit nasty looking. So if I go into that element and I give it my new family and wait for it to regenerate. There's a lot to think about. All those points, all those edges. I'm going to pause for a second. And here we have our nice seamless mullion. And I can zoom in on it and you can see that there's some nastiness in the corners. It's no nastier than what you would get with our old curtain systems with the joint conditions. Um, but the nice thing about this also is that you can control the depth and 
thickness of the mullions pretty easily based on those parameters. Uh, if you go in and edit the properties. So I've got my mullion thickness and I've got my mullion height. And so I just want to change that into something else. So I just want to make it not be quite so deep. Oh, what did I do there? Seven feet. Let's call it two feet. Let's make it very narrow but very fat. And then I'll think about that. 25%, 30%. And now I've got something that's nice and thick. Here you can really see the artifacts a little bit more. It's a little less obvious when you do something that's a bit more realistic as a million. And that's it. Hope that was educational.